10 learnings from 10 years of Maria Popova's brain pickings. One, allow yourself the uncomfortable luxury of changing your mind. Cultivate the capacity for negative capability. What negative capability means is the willingness to embrace uncertainty, live with mystery, and make peace with ambiguity. Because we live in a culture where one of the greatest social disgraces is not having an opinion. So we often form our opinions based on superficial impressions or the borrowed ideas of others without investing the time and thought that cultivating true conviction necessitates. We then go around asserting these donned opinions and clinging to them as anchors to our own reality. It's enormously disorientating to simply say, I don't know. But it's infinitely more rewarding to understand than to be right, even if that means changing your mind about a topic, an ideology, or above all, yourself. 2. Do nothing for prestige, or status, or money, or approval alone. As Paul Graham observed, prestige is like a powerful magnet that warps even your beliefs about what you enjoy. It causes you to work not on what you like, but what you'd like to like. Those extrinsic motivators are fine and can feel like life affirming in the moment, but they ultimately don't make it thrilling to get up in the morning and gratifying to go to sleep at night. And in fact, it can often distract and detract from the things that do offer those deeper rewards. Three, be generous. Be generous with your time and your resources and with giving credit and especially with your words. It's so much easier to be a critic than a celebrator. Always remember there is a human being on the other end of every exchange and behind every cultural artifact being critiqued. To understand and be understood, those are among life's greatest gifts and every interaction is an opportunity to exchange them. 4. Build pockets of stillness into your life. Meditate, go for walks, ride your bike going nowhere in particular. There is a creative purpose to daydreaming, even to boredom. The best ideas come to us when we stop actively trying to coax the muse into manifesting and let fragments of experience float around our unconscious mind in order to click into new combinations. Without this essential stage of unconscious processing, the entire flow of the creative process is broken. Most important, sleep. Besides being the greatest creative aphrodisiac, sleep also affects our every waking moment, dictates our social rhythm, and even mediates our negative moods. Be as religious and disciplined about your sleep as you are about your work. We tend to wear our ability to get by on little sleep as some sort of badge of honor that validates our work ethic. But what it really is, is a profound failure of self-respect and of priorities. What could possibly be more important than your health and your sanity, from which all else springs? 5. When people tell you who they are, Maya Angelou famously advised, believe them. Just as important, however, when people try to tell you who you are, don't believe them. You are the only custodian of your own integrity, and the assumptions made by those that misunderstand who you are and what you stand for reveal a great deal about them and absolutely nothing about you. 6. Presence is far more intricate and rewarding in art than productivity. Ours is a culture that measures our worth as human beings by efficiency, our earnings, our ability to perform this or that. The cult of productivity has its place, but worshipping at its altar daily robs us of the very capacity for joy and wonder that makes life worth living. For as Annie Dillard memorably put it, how we spend our days is of course, how we spend our lives. 7. Expect anything worthwhile to take a long time. This is borrowed from the wise and wonderful Debbie Millman, for it's hard to better capture something so fundamental yet so impatiently overlooked in our culture of immediacy. The myth of the overnight success is just that, a myth, as well as a reminder that our present definition of success needs serious retuning. As I've reflected elsewhere, the flower doesn't go from bud to blossom in one sprightly burst, and yet, as a culture, we're disinterested in the tedium of blossoming. But that's where all the magic unfolds in the making of one's character and destiny. 8. Seek out what magnifies your spirit. Patti Smith, in discussing William Blake and her creative influences, talks about writers and artists who magnified her spirit. It's a beautiful phrase and a beautiful notion. Who are the people, ideas and books that magnify your spirit? Find them. Hold on to them. 
and visit them often. Use them not only as a remedy once spiritual malaise has already infected your vitality, but as a vaccine administered while you are healthy to protect your radiance. 9. Don't be afraid to be an idealist. There is much to be said for our responsibility as creators and consumers of that constant dynamic interaction we call culture. Which side of the fault line between catering and creating are we to stand on? The commercial enterprise is conditioning us to believe that the road to success is paved with catering to existing demands. Give the people cat gifts, the narrative goes, because cat gifts are what the people want. But E.B. White, one of our last great idealists, was eternally right when he asserted half a century ago that the role of the writer is to lift people up, not lower them down. A role each of us is called to with increasing urgency, whatever cog we may be in the machinery of society. Supply creates its own demand. Only by consistently supplying it can we hope to increase the demand for the substantive over the superficial in our individual lives and in the collective dream called culture. And lastly, 10. Don't just resist cynicism, fight it actively. Fight it in yourself for this ungainly beast lays dormant in each of us, and counter it in those you love and engage with by modelling its opposite. Cynicism often masquerades as nobler faculties and dispositions, but is categorically inferior. Unlike that great Ralkin life expanding doubt, it is a contracting force. Unlike critical thinking, that pillar of reason and necessary counterpart to hope, it is inherently uncreative, unconstructive, and spiritually corrosive. Life, like the universe itself, tolerates no stasis. In the absence of growth, decay usurps the order. Like all forms of destruction, cynicism is infinitely easier and lazier than construction. There is nothing more difficult yet more gratifying in our society than living with sincerity and acting from a place of large-hearted, constructive, rational faith in the human spirit, continually bending toward growth and betterment. This remains the most potent antidote to cynicism. Today, especially, it is an act of courage and resistance. Thank you to Maria Popova for curating the most illuminating stories from history's most inspiring influences every single Sunday for the last 10 years. You ask who are the people and ideas that magnify your spirit? Well, you are one of them. Thank you.